The Fetch API makes it easy to retrieve data from an external source. Here is the basic syntax. The first parameter is the URL that will provide the data. The second parameter is optional and is an object containing options. In this example, we are retrieving a list of to-do tasks. Fetch is promise-based, so we will use dot then to get our response. The response contains our headers and data. In order to consume the data, we will need to convert it into JSON. So we return response.json. Once that is returned, it will move into the next dot then, and now we can do something with the JSON data. This example will return 200 to-do tasks. In this next example, we are only asking for the to-do task with the ID of 1. In our console, we will see the ID, title, completion status, and user ID. By default, without any options, fetch uses the get method. We can also use other methods with fetch. That's where the options come in. In this example, we're going to create a new to-do task. After our URL, we will include our options object. The first option will be the method, and we will use post. Next, we'll include the data that we want to send in the body. In order to send it properly, we have to wrap it in json.stringify. And lastly, we include our headers option with our content type set to application JSON. After that, we have our first dot then that receives the response and processes the JSON. Then our second dot then can do something with the response data. In this instance, we receive the data that we sent along with an ID that the server added. Initially, there were 200 entries and now there are 201. There are other factors to consider when using fetch, such as error handling. Note that if you receive an error status such as a 404 error, fetch will still resolve successfully so you will need to do some extra error handling. This has been a 90 second JavaScript January.